uh, I want to share something with you. Uh, uh, somebody once said uh, the following, I believe suicide is one of the most undercovered and miscovered issues on our landscape. Unfortunately, there is little meaningful discussion on the topic in newsrooms and a paucity of guidance for journalists. It was said by Dr. Robert Steele, uh, who's the ethics group leader at uh, Pointer Institute, Florida, USA. Uh, this topic is going to be very relevant in today's times, especially. Stay tuned. Uh, compelling evidence from the initial findings of a comprehensive and systematic review of international research into the impact of media coverage of suicide suggests that media professionals everywhere have an onerous responsibility when reporting about suicide. The review covers a variety of media portrayals of suicide, including fiction. This commentary focuses on journalistic coverage of suicide. Probably the most important and encouraging message of the study is that responsible approaches to the portrayal of suicide be suicidal behavior in the media can save lives. This raises an immediate question about what constitutes responsible reporting and who is to define it. Relatives, sociologists, the police, politicians, media regulators and analysts or media professionals themselves. If journalists do not receive specific training early in their careers about how to tackle one of the most disturbing human tragedies, how are they supposed to develop uh, responsible techniques? As anyone who has had to come to terms with the suicide of a family member or close friends knows discussion about the topic is riddled with taboos like mental illness. Most people who attempt or succeed in killing themselves have suffered from some form of mental illness. Failure to acknowledge this fact helps to shroud the topic in mystery, but emphasizing the point can cause additional distress and confusion to those trying to cope with their loss. The Media Wise Trust, the UK-based media ethics charity that advises people with complaints about media coverage, has been approached on numerous occasions by distraught relatives who were unaware that personal information supplied to an inquest hearing is automatically in the public domain, unless the coroner has agreed to limit reporting. They have found themselves suddenly confronted with distressing inquiries, often from inexperienced reporters who have been assigned to the dreaded death knock. That's how they call it. Later, they have to deal with even more problematic consequences that can flow from published reports, especially where children are involved. Details of the suicide method are described or family problems that come to light. These anxieties are exacerbated when the media turn the suicide of a celebrity into some sort of a spectacle. Celebrity status may have been achieved by a combination of personal talent or wealth and the assiduous efforts of public relations industry, but the media confers added value by exploiting the sales or ratings potential of celebrities and the distorting process that is fame has often been blamed for the pressures that have led someone to take their own precious life. When time and space is devoted to intrusive and sometimes speculative coverage about the circumstances surrounding such a suicide, it can have far reaching consequences, not just for the immediate family, but for those to whom the deceased has become a role model. We are seeing this happen today as we speak. Media, digital and otherwise, is being consumed by people across age groups. Responsible journalism is the need of the hour. Facts need to be adhered to and no room left for stigma nor conjecture. So by now you know you have a fair idea of what the topic is. Uh, it's about responsible media coverage of suicide survivors and those we have lost. And we have a special speaker for this session on this topic, Dr. R. Mangla. Dr. Mangla has over 20 years of experience in the field of psychiatry. She currently is Assistant Director Media and Communications at Schizophrenia Research Foundation, SCOF, in Chennai, and is actively involved in the clinical services, including residential facilities, research, and community-based activities. She has developed a digital online course for 
sensitive reporting on mental health issues for journalists as part of the Essence project, partnering with Sangat Bhopal and funded by NIH, National Institute of Health. She serves as a mentor for fellowships that are part of this project. She regularly participates in television and radio talk shows focusing on mental health issues. And she has been one of the key organizers of Frame of Mind, a film festival on mental health, a first of its kind in India. Welcome, Dr. Mangla. Pleasure to have you here and the floor is yours. Thank you, Girish. It was wonderful listening to you and thank you for that warm welcome. Uh, at the outset, I would like to thank Mr. Dilli Babu for having me here to speak to such a fine audience. Uh, before I start, uh, are there many journalists in the group? Well, that's a million dollar question. I, I, <laughs> I, I yeah. hope we have. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, the reason why I'm asking is if uh, people who are not journalists might think that it is not relevant to them to know about um, reporting practices related to mental health and suicide. But then as consumers, we have a responsibility to highlight when there is a flaw. If you're only if you're aware of what responsible reporting of suicide is, you can highlight what went wrong, especially now that social media has no uh, control over what is getting posted. I think people being aware of what is the best practice to talk about or discuss about suicide and reporting on suicide is very important to all of us, even if we are not journalists. So uh, I think all the previous speakers have covered all the essential features of suicide. Uh, in very, very much in detail. So the theme for this year's uh, World Suicide Prevention Day is the same as what was last year, working together in preventing suicide. That has been the theme for last year as well. Why is it important for all of us to talk about suiciders? I think if you sit back and think, every one of us have had some kind of an experience with suicide, not necessarily uh, in first person, but we would have known someone who has had an experience with suicide. Even it may not be in the immediate family or in the immediate uh, community, but even if it is a celebrity suicide, someone you're aware of, you know, and that can have an impact on your mental well being as well. Before we move on to media reporting, I think we must first understand the basics of suicide. Suicide is not a willingness to die. It is an unwillingness to live. I think there is a huge difference between the two thoughts. And it is not as simple as one reason leading to suicide. All those factors that we identify as causes of suicide are just triggers. And the actual reasons behind any completed suicide is very complex and it is multifactorial. There is always an individual vulnerability and the stressors acting together in tandem leading to suicides. So now why are we talking about suicide and the media? When the WHO came up with measures to control suicide, I mean control suicide rates and prevention of suicide, it suggested a few areas where all of us could intervene. The first one was reducing access to the means of suicide. That was the pesticides, whether it is firearms, and I'm sure most of you in Chennai will be aware of that great work that Sneha and Dr. Lakshmi Vijay Kumar have done, especially in storing the pesticides in a common place, in a place called Katamanar Puri, where they have done a, a several years of study and removing immediate access to the pesticides brought about a significant reduction in the uh, suicides that was happening in that area. And the second most important uh, factor that the WHO raised was media reporting in a responsible way. All the other things come after that, you know, whether it is interventions at the school level, training gatekeepers, uh, looking at our alcohol policies, looking at our drug policies and uh, training and then uh, 
follow up care of people who have already made a suicidal attempt, the need for community support, all these things came up or are much down the ladder. Media reporting is number two in its list of recommendations. So now why is the media so important? If we go back to the 17th century, several studies have shown, I mean, over the years, several studies have shown that the media reporting plays a big role. But interestingly, the basis for all this is what we call the Werther effect. Journalists will be familiar with the term. Um, Werther effect refers to the effect that a book by uh, Goethe, he, his first book or probably one of his most successful books, The Sorrows of Young Werther, it was a huge success. And the hero of the story, he had a love failure. And so he decided to uh, end his life. What happened subsequently was several of his, several people who read the book attempted suicide to the extent that several European countries banned the book. It was the first proof that copycat suicides were real. Subsequently, if you um, move further down, I think, let us come back to the 20th and the 21st centuries. Uh, we all know uh, the more, most recent celebrity suicide that was studied at length in the world was Robbie Williams' suicide. And several studies done following Robbie Williams' death was, it showed that there was an increase in the number of people who attempted suicide in the same manner and in the same age group. So this was very significant, and this was despite a lot of ways, you know, it was actually a fairly well-reported story, but this still resulted in uh, copycat suicides. Closer to home, I, I can recall uh, a newspaper report that I came across when I was in school, that was in uh, late 70s, early 80s. And okay, I'm a movie buff, so I am going back to movies. So um, the Tamil speaking audience might remember there were two huge blockbusters in that time. One was Alagal Oivadilai and the other one was Killing Jalgal. Uh, Alagal Oivadilai was a, what was, it was a very sensational romantic film where both the hero and the heroine, they decide to disown their religious identities and run out of their hometown when they are hardly 17 or 18. To start a new life. You know, that was, it was very refreshing for the uh, young people to say that their love won in the end. In Kilinjal Gal, a similar situation, but then uh, again, there is a religious clash, but then both of them commit suicide. Both these movies were very successful blockbusters. Interestingly, there was a much better movie, Panir Pushpangal, around the same time, which clearly said where the boy and the girl are advised by a teacher that this is this is not the age for romance both of you go back to your studies and they obliged it was not sensational and so i think it left the memories of the people very soon but the point i'm trying to make here is soon after both these movies were released i remember reading a newspaper report in a tamil uh, daily a popular tamil daily a couple Found, was found dead in a hotel uh, room with a suicide note which said, since we could not live as the lovers of Allegal Oivadillai, we decided to end ourselves like the lovers of Kilinjal Ghan. It was in Tamil. I'm, trying, I'm translating it into English for the non-Tamil audience here. That was the impact that media could have in the minds of a vulnerable group. Now, moving on, several studies, you know, uh, uh, even in the 1970s, close to 50 studies were done. A lot of systemic reviews were done to look at how suicides and media reporting are related. So several uh, findings were made based on this. And there are certain special circumstances under which they become more significant. Usually, following a suicide reporting, there is a peak of 
copycat suicides within the first three days. But then usually it levels off after a period of two weeks usually and sometimes it stays a little longer. But again, that depends on the prominence and the repeat coverage that that particular story gets. And that is related to the imitative behaviors. And uh, if the person described in the story and the reader, they are able to relate to each other in some way, you know, that this number of suicides get accentuated. And if it is a celebrity who is held in high regard, then the chances of a copycat suicide becomes more. There have been studies even following soap operas, um, no, sorry, not soap operas, the, uh, the TV soaps that happen. Uh, following one episode of a particular soap in the UK, where a young girl attempts to kill herself using an over-the-counter prescription drug. This, that weekend, there was a stream of people coming into the ER with the same kind of you know, suicidal attempt. So that was the impact of what media can do, especially when the suicidal methods are very explicitly shown on screen. And if the method is described, then the chances of that method being used again and again becomes more. So uh, the first person who started research on this was one Phillips. And then after that, several researchers have uh, done a lot of work. And to prove that responsible media reporting can bring about a change in uh, the number of suicides, the classic example will be the one study that was done in Vienna. Uh, when the first subway was uh, made in Vienna, between 1983 and 87, there were several suicides happening around the subway. And this was keeping on increasing and people were not able to identify why it was happening so much in that particular area. And when recommendations were made about the media reporting of those suicides, and when the practice changed, when the location of the suicide was slowly, when they started not mentioning that and altered the way the suicides were reported, there was an 80% reduction in the number of suicides that happened in that particular subway in the second half of the year. So it is that important. So I think this was one of the reasons like people really woke up to the fact that media can play a huge role, not only in uh, raising awareness about suicide prevention, but also in preventing suicides in a lot, a lot of people. Which is now we know why the WHO decided to keep media reporting so high on its strategies. So now, why does your media report uh, contribute to suicide in a reader? There are several theories which talk about it, but then what we can generally understand is there are three important factors that makes the person consider suicide after reading about it is there is a breakdown in that individual's social structure. And this person also has an access to the means of suicide. And when there is a celebrity suicide, a natural fear of death that all of us have, they are able to overcome that and they are able to jump onto one side of the wall. Till then, probably they are standing on the wall. So a high profile celebrity suicide generally can partially fulfill this third element of overcoming the fear of death. So now this gives rise to a question. If I can have a response from the audience, I mean, you can uh, message. How many of you believe that talking about suicide will give us give a person an idea to attempt suicide? I see one yes. Okay, those who say yes can also yeah. uh, raise your hands. Uh, in the, There's an emoji where you can raise your hand if you want to. Yeah, that would be easier. Okay, I can see three people who are saying yes. If all of you believe that, I think the weather effect also seems to claim to back up this, I mean, it seems to back up this claim. 
but if that is the case what was nelson doing in the previous session so far if talking about suicide can give rise to ideas what exactly are we doing when we are offering support i have to remind you here talking about suicide will not give anyone a suicidal ideation that is one of the biggest myths and in fact that is the myth that has to be broken so that people even when they feel that someone is not well they are very hesitant to approach them and ask them if they need help you know one of the reasons is they are worried that if they talk about death wish or suicide they might get an idea it is not true you are just making a incision on an abscess and the pus will come pouring out you ask them that and it comes out pouring and you will be able to help it all depends on how we are going to ask that that is where the trick is so coming back to that so now how does the media support in preventing suicide that is what we call the papageno effect no uh, papageno was a character in one of mozart's uh, probably 18th century opera the magic flute and papageno is a character he, again he also has a love failure he loses his love and so he decides on committing suicide i'm sorry decides on killing himself his attempt is prevented in the last minute by three other characters three young boys in the opera who tell him that there are other alternatives to death in life you know so there is dying is not your solution and he decides to quit so he decides to give up the idea of dying and he continues to live so for individuals in crisis the non suicide alternatives to crisis is being presented by the media and that can have a very very uh, positive effect on lives now it is not the content that is being presented which is important it is more the way that it is presented and that is where all our guidelines for presentation presenting uh, mental health i'm sorry suicide reporting comes in so what are all the things that somebody should do there is a there are a lot of guidelines and recommendations available about uh, suicide uh, reporting in the media both from the who and in countries across the globe um, india has also has a suicide the media guidelines for suicide reporting unfortunately not many media houses are making sure that it is being followed but when it is followed adequately i think it will have a huge impact on suicide reporting so now uh, some of the uh, more important ones will be the language so what is the language that you use when you are going to make a, a presentation about uh, suicide so uh, it can be like so and so uh, used a gun to commit suicide or someone uh, killed himself with a uh, with a gun or whatever so now that makes it a very prominent headline very sensationalized and if it is going to appear on the first page of a newspaper definitely it is going to catch the attention of anyone and everyone who lays his eyes on the newspaper so the first thing that the who recommends is please move stories related to suicide to pages much below definitely not headlines in the first page and again coming to the headlines someone it uh, let us take uh, sushant's uh, death when it was reported as suicide on the first day when it was in the news i think some newspapers had a very very responsible reporting they just said sushant sushant singh rajput passes away maybe at 33 or 34 the age was mentioned so i think that is less sensationalizing than saying that sushant was found hanging and he was brought down and all that so the way that news is the words that are used to announce the death by suicide makes a very very huge impact on the reader and uh, again as i said giving it too prominent a placement and and your repetition of the stories about the suicide 
are best avoided. Um, and when we're talking about the visual media, what is very important is generally, these are all very sensationalizing news, but the guidelines are very clear that one shall not report death by suicide in the first segment of the news. It has to come either in the second or the third segment, and that is what responsible reporting of suicide is. Describing the method that was used is a strict no. It, it has to be kept as minimal as possible. I think closer to home uh, in the uh, recent times, the two suicides that I can think of which made a lot of news was uh, the one by the Cafe Coffee Day owner and another one a little uh, earlier was the husband of the famous uh, Carnatic singer Nitya Shri. In both the cases, soon after when it was announced in the uh, media that Nitya Shri's husband jumped over the bridge in a river in Chennai. There were immediately three or four suicides happening in the same location the very next day. And I think the, the walls were raised subsequently to prevent further suicide. I, I think there again the media can play a very big role, you know, pointing out that it is a possible uh, place where people could attempt suicide is very important. It is, again, the responsibility of the media to uh, make sure that preventive measures are taken. So that way it helps. And using photographs, using photographs of the dead person, I mean, as the body is found or uh, whether it is murder or uh, death by suicide, it would be best if we avoid those images and use photographs from our, our file photographs, younger photographs or family photographs or whatever, uh, which are, they are less sensationalizing and less stigmatizing as well. And there is a tendency to use words like, you know, there is a racing epidemic of uh, suicides or the number of suicides is skyrocketing. It's all very scary. And those are very strong terms. If we are very keen about referring to trends or referring to statistics, we have to have access to proper data and see if the numbers are really high in comparison with the previous years or uh, at other times in the same location. So, and without that, it is irresponsible to say about, to comment on uh, the number of suicides that are happening. And uh, the other common language that we can find in a, a newspaper report on uh, suicide will be, uh, it happened without warning, which is not really true. Most suicides definitely have some kind of issues, you know, some warning signs that we may fail to look at. So if the newspaper story can actually cover those warning signs, give a list of those warning signs. I think that was beautifully covered by uh, Nelson in the previous session, so I am not going into it. So giving them ideas about what a person should look for in a person who is possibly suicidal will help them to identify it early and prevent a suicide. And remember, reporting it as an event doesn't really help. It, is, it has to be reported as a public health issue and it would be great if you could get advice from a suicide prevention expert or a mental health professional or someone who is working in the field of suicide. And another common thing that we do notice that is a, a quote from always the first responders. Usually it will be the police or someone in the lay public whom we see. And they are the ones who are going to give us causes of suicide. Again, as I said, all those causes that get listed from the police or from the uh, lay public or from the family need not necessarily be the cause. By doing that, we are personalizing the suicide and the public health issue never gets covered in that. And uh, most important, suicide is not a crime. It, uh, uh, both morally and legally now it, is, it has been decriminalized. But still, we all refer to suicide as someone who committed suicide. 
uh, um, I, it is not a crime. And it, it is best written as death by suicide or died by suicide or even killed himself or herself. That would be a better way than saying committed. And the other interesting reference is usually there is a, a mention of uh, following previous unsuccessful attempts. He was successful this time or his attempt failed. What exactly do we mean by that? Are we saying that death is a outcome that you consider as a success and not dying is considered a failure? Those are terms that are very, very uh, unprofessional and irresponsible and need to be avoided. So reading that kind of a report should give us an idea that it was it is not a great report to read. All right. Ma'am, uh, uh, ma uh, there, are, there are a couple of questions as we are running out of time. So yeah. uh, uh, if there's so something... I just have, I'm, I will just conclude. Yeah. Yes, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah. Talking about celebrity mental illnesses and celebrity suicides, I think if it is positively framed, it will be a wonderful tool in breaking down the stigma related to suicide and it will definitely encourage help seeking. But unfortunately, I think uh, we have all learned about how a suicide cannot be reported and how it cannot be treated by the media in the one uh, case that we are now uh, reading every day all over the place. And this has trivialized the seriousness of mental health issues because it has become more of gossip and entertainment than uh, serious reporting. And the, more than the language, your resources and reliability of the resources are very important. Yeah, the most important thing, you may have to add a crisis intervention, information about any crisis intervention services, phone numbers, personnel that are available, uh, uh, all that is a standard, much needed thing. And it is, it would be great if we are able to provide that in all the stories that are reporting on suicide. So it is very important that we steer away from melodramatic depictions, be very sensitive, non-sensational, and consider the placements and the reports with illustrations being very, very careful about it. So we, or we just have to remember that it is not an unwillingness to, uh, it is not a willingness to die, but an unwillingness to live. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, ma'am. But we are not willing to let go of you already because we have a couple of questions. Yes. Uh, in fact, we had several questions. Many of the questions seem to have already been answered uh, by uh, going by what all, uh, all that you have shared with us. They already answered some of the questions. There are two questions though. Uh, somebody has asked this, uh, are those diagnosed with schizophrenia more susceptible to suicide? Normally, suicide is uh, more common in people who are experiencing their first episode of depression. Schizophrenia can have suicide, but it is not necessary that suicides and schizophrenia are more common than uh, other people. It is not so. Suicides and schizophrenia can happen for, uh, it can happen in very early stages of uh, schizophrenia when they have a lot of uh, fears and apprehensions and they feel that the best way is to escape from this, you know. Uh, but usually it happens when there is a post schizophrenic depression. When again, it is more the depression rather than the schizophrenia that can cause uh, a suicidal, yeah, that can lead to a suicidal attempt in a person with schizophrenia. Okay, ma'am. Uh, and uh, the second question is, I, somebody has asked this, uh, I have been diagnosed with bipolar disorder since 2004. After a suicide attempt in June 2014 and no job or business, how do I move ahead and live a productive life? Uh, why, why is the suicidal attempt of 2014 affecting uh, him or her from moving on in life. Uh, I, I think they should seek professional help. He or she should seek professional help and discuss this. You know, the, I can't give a one, yeah. one stop solution for that uh, yeah. question. Okay. Uh, I'm very happy that someone is able to come forward and talk about having made a suicidal attempt in the past because 
I think that is very, very important. It's only when people come out talking about it, it'll get destigmatized and more people will come forward to seek help when they have difficulties. All right. Uh, I'm sure they, they, have, they have their questions answered. And you had a question, ma'am, at the very beginning of this session. Yeah. Are there journalists right here, you know, watching you and listening to you? Well, uh, although I don't, I don't have an answer to that, I'm sure this, uh, this uh, uh, show is going, to be, uh, is going to go on record. And uh, I'm sure several journalists will get to watch this. And uh, may this benefit a lot of them and us. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your time. Thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure. Pleasure having you. Our pleasure having you here. Thank you so much. And if people are interested, the course that we run for journalists is open and people can register. The uh, registrations are still going on for the second batch. So those who are interested can visit our website and register. All right. There you go, people. So you can, you can, you can advise friends of yours who are journalists. All right. Uh, and other journalists as well. Thank you so much, Pat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.